There are serious concerns over the health of Julian Assange. Experts told the UK court this week that the Australian WikiLeaks founder is at major risk of suicide. Assange is fighting extradition from the UK to the US, where he's facing 18 charges related to WikiLeaks releases. We just wrapped the third week of what's widely seen as the most important case for press freedom in modern history. Journalist Kevin Gostola has been following developments. I spoke with him earlier. Kevin Gostola, thanks for joining Sky News Your World. Now, there was a lot of focus on Julian Assange's health this week. What did we learn? How is he and how is he being treated? Well, what we're hearing from Assange's legal team about Julian Assange's health is that uh, they had doctors who, uh, at least one that diagnosed him with severe depression, the other doctors found that he had uh, moderate depression, but that perhaps uh, at, at one point while he was incarcerated at Belmarsh, he had severe depression. We also heard from one doctor who um, was involved in conducting a test on him, and it came back that he has Asperger's syndrome, which could be significant because there have been two key cases in uh, the United Kingdom involving Gary McKinnon and Lori Love, who are both hackers, uh, their extraditions to the United States were blocked because of a diagnosis of Asperger's syndrome. So we're hearing about his risk of suicide if he would be extradited to the United States. And the defense is putting all of this evidence into the record to discourage the judge from approving the extradition because they believe it would violate his human rights if he was uh, allowed to be handed over to the U.S. government. And the court recently heard that an associate of Donald Trump offered Assange a pardon if he revealed who leaked the DNC emails in 2016. Do we know if this deal was legitimate and whether Trump actually had a hand in this? What we don't know is if uh, Representative David Rohrabacher, who was a congressman, uh, we don't know if he was being honest and truthful when he represented to Julian Assange that there was a pardon offer for him from President Donald Trump. And I am skeptical as somebody who has followed U.S. politics. There have been Republicans who have made representations about um, what they are doing on behalf of Donald Trump that have proven to be false. But it was only entered because of the truth of the matter asserted, which means that it doesn't have to be proven to be a real offer. It just is factually the reality that this congressman went to the embassy, met with Assange, claimed to be offering a pardon, and the appearance is there that there is a political reason behind this prosecution, um, and, and that the defense would argue that Julian Assange rejecting the offer might have played a role in the U.S. Justice Department bringing the case. And one of the most famous leakers or whistleblowers, Daniel Ellsberg, testified around the importance of what WikiLeaks published and the dangerous precedent that Julian Assange's prosecution sets. What were his arguments exactly? Daniel Ellsberg's testimony was crucial to showing what would happen to Julian Assange if he was extradited to the United States and put on trial for violations of the Espionage Act. The U.S. Espionage Act does not allow somebody who is prosecuted to provide a public interest defense in the middle of the courtroom. And he shared his own story of how, when he was prosecuted for releasing the Pentagon Papers, that was the study on the uh, Vietnam War, that he could not share why he had disclosed that information. His lawyer asked him to tell the court why he did what he did, and the prosecutor objected, and the judge sustained and allowed that objection. So he was not able to tell a jury why he did what he did. So that is something that would factor into whether Julian Assange would receive a fair trial.